He's got a big brain So in this experience, I was at the store. It was a lot like an experience I've had in the past, right? I was my human self, and I was walking down this aisle. I took Apple Jacks off the shelf, and I put it in my cart. And I walked to the end of the aisle. And a store employee named Jonathan asked me if I needed help with anything. Instead of saying no, though, I knew it was Rebizar. And I said, hey, Rebizar, dude, can you show me where the awareness is? And he looked at me really confused and said that they don't sell that. So I thought for a minute. And I said, where's the beef? He gestured for me to follow him, so I did. And, and he walked me to the beef section. I said, thanks. And he walked away. I didn't actually want beef, though, so I walked back to the aisle I was at before and started walking down the next aisle. It was the snack aisle. But then I was as I was walking down this aisle... I saw someone in the aisle. He, he was just kind of looking at the shelves. So I walked up to him. and It turned out to be that fubby guy. He's smoking a fat joint. I tried to say hey and ask him how he's been because I haven't seen him in a while. He seemed so out of it though. Like he was standing right in front of me smoking his blunt. But he didn't seem to like hear me. So I kept walking through this aisle. Before I got to the end of the aisle, I saw someone familiar walk through the doors of the store. It was Jeremy. He had his eyes dead set on me. But I remember what Dwayne said. He said a few weeks back, the Jeremy, the Jeremy that I saw in my experience a while back was actually some Henry dude pretending to be Jeremy. So I wasn't too worried when we met in the aisle. He was saying that the dark forces were there to get me because they found out where I was. And I said, bro, I know you're not actually Jeremy, so show your real face. And then he kind of laughed and said something like, did Dwayne tell you that? I was like, yeah. He laughed again. Then he was all like, all was planned. Dwayne has no idea that another one of his own turned against him. And I said, give up, Henry. I'm too aware for you. Then he walked up close to me and put his hand on my shoulder and said, like, uh, I'm not Henry, I'm Jeremy. Henry is also in the dark forces, though, with Kelsey and others. No one will believe you when you tell them about me secretly working for the dark forces. And then one day we'll get rid of you and you'll be gone. We'll destroy the new you from the inside. After that, I shapeshifted into my fluffy dragon form because I was ready to attack this clown. He looked at me. And smiled and just pet my head. It felt really good and calmed me down pretty quick. I think I even yawned. Then all of a sudden, he caught me by surprise and grabbed me by the throat. And that sucked, man. I, I didn't need to breathe because it was on the real side, but he still grabbed me really hard. He pulled my head up to his level again. And he said something like, we are going to get rid of you, Eric. And then we'll get Phil and Kevin and Eva and Mary and Ronald and Peter and, and the, the new you will be no more. I tried to escape his grasp, but I, I couldn't get my neck free. So I said, what about Dwayne and Steve and Barry? Jeremy kind of looked at me all confused and was like, who are they? He said, they're new friends too. I think Jeremy said, I've never seen them before. Yes, we'll get them too, I suppose. After that, we just kind of stood there looking at each other for a while. But he didn't really let go of my neck. So I was all like, so you're going to kill me or my bot bodies or not? And all of a sudden, these two other dudes show up. One of them stood next to Jeremy, and the other was kind of floating at his side. The one that was standing said he was Henry Draper. 
So I, I guess that's the guy that you were talking about, Dwayne. I recognize the floating guy, too. It was Dark Dwayne from my other experience. Then Jeremy told the other two to grab my legs, and Henry asked Jeremy, just like we talked about, right? And then they did that, and I tried to fight back, bite them, and stuff. But, but Jeremy was still holding my neck, so I couldn't really. And then the other two held all six of my limbs in those chains that I saw around Jeremy's wrist in that one experience a while back. I couldn't move, man. Jeremy was holding my neck. Those chains held my limbs in place. Then Jeremy had the gall to lean forward and sing the hue at me. I growled at him for that, man. Then I saw him gesture to Dark Dwayne, and he said, get rid of him. There wasn't anything I could do, man. I tried to escape, but there was, there was no way. Dark Dwayne just took this big, sharp thing and stabbed it through my chest. And I don't know what it was, but it actually hurt. And I kind of watched Jeremy laughing at me. And he said, Phil's next, as my vision and the experience kind of started to fade. And I, won't, and I woke back in the physical. I haven't had another experience since then, man. And that was last Friday. I'm worried that Jeremy and Henry and Dark Dwayne killed one of my five bodies, and I only have four left. I have not felt good, bro. Okay, well, wow, this is a wow experience, Eric. Yeah, how about that? Henry Draper was married to Kelsey. Who's Kelsey? Whoa. Kelsey's like a, a warlock, I think. She's a witch. Oh, warlock, bro. Yeah, Eric. Uh, yeah, that's Henry. And Henry had left here uh, when we first got to the ranch. It was about, oh, they were about here six months. It was Henry, Kelsey, because they were married. They were married in Huntington Beach. Uh, about a year or so before. Uh, and though the person that uh, was impersonating Jeremy was Eric Oak. He's a black kid. He's a black fellow, about 20, 22, 24, something like that. Yeah, he's black kid. Eric Oak, O A K, like the tree, Eric Oak. And so. Uh, My name's Eric. Yeah, his name's Eric Oak, and um, and he was uh, he did a lot for several years with us for several years, and then all of a sudden um, they were acting funny. They they sent away for this substance uh, that grows in Africa, and uh, they start they started smoking it. I forget what it's called. There's a couple different varieties of it, but what anyhow. Like uh, smoking in the experience. Uh, I'm not sure. I forget. Okay, so and then they they all started getting funny, and actually Kelsey took a whole lot, and she was way out of it. She was walking around like a zombie, and then finally uh, someone from her family came and got her, and talked her out of uh, talked her into leaving here, which she did. She just left. She. She didn't take anything with her. It was an afternoon, and I was talking on the patio with uh, Val or somebody, and then she was around the side of the yard uh, talking to these people, and all of a sudden, she just leaves. She was in her shorts, uh, you know, T-shirt. She had nothing with her, uh, no clothes, nothing. She just left, and then um, two, two and a half years later, uh, you know, she went through a lot of rehabilitation, institution, all kinds of this stuff, therapy. Uh, she came back. She started calling us and talking to us, etc. And we were happy to see that she was okay. Uh, Henry, he went off. He went to Maui and other places. His parents are rich. They're millionaires. So he probably just lived off of them. Um, but then she, uh, you know, again, she started getting funny here. She started... Uh, doing some substances or whatever again, and all of a sudden things got really funny. She did funny things to our neighbors too, uh, etc. And finally she left. And please don't jump to conclusions with your mind. Just kind of let go of your mind, okay? Well, stop He's thinking. Keep creating. Just like you are. Yeah, just don't jump to conclusions, okay? So again, uh, 
it doesn't matter what people do. Uh, all life is what it is. When people uh, like the experience you're going through with, if it's Jeremy there or whoever, uh, everything is cause and effect. That's in creation and the dark Dwayne. Well, somebody is, uh, you know, just like you're an experience, you saw the real Dwayne and uh, somebody is, uh, you know, imitating. They do that. They create clones. They imitate, etc. Because um, none of that's my intent. My only intent is uh, the isness itself and helping others wake up. But well, again, that's you though, that's not Dark Dwayne. Well, Dark Dwayne can be anybody. That can they can they can create clones. Okay. So again, uh, this this becomes very interesting. So um, I'm not concerned about what people do. You just watch the real side there. And uh, uh, again, I would suggest uh, uh, asking, uh, you know, uh, Rebazar what's going on. And in one of the aisles, you saw Fubi. That would be Fubi Quants, right? The guy yeah, with the long. Fubi guy. Yeah, and he's smoking. And a, he's smoking a joint. Well, he's showing you that things are funny. You know, it's just like when you smoke a joint. And I used to smoke marijuana, too, when I was young in my 20s. I did it for a That's few weird, years. Man. It's fine. It's all fine. It's all nothing. It's nothing stuff. So, again, uh, and, uh, you know, he's giving you the hint that somebody's stoned. Okay. He's giving you the hint. The boys give you. Is it fubby? I, is it what? Is it fubby that's stone? See you again. The smoking the joint. There's your mind. Fubi's giving you the hint about what's coming up. So the next part of the experience is is that you uh, confront Jeremy and Henry. Okay, so the he's. Yeah. Whatever. And so he's giving you a hint that, you know, things are funny or stoned or people are stoned or they're doped or whatever. OK, because marijuana is also termed as dope or you're doped or you're stoned or whatever. OK, uh, I get that. So he's giving you the hint. He's giving you a heads up as you're walking through the aisles. OK, and so your experience is what it is. And so uh you know, I've I've seen this my whole life as I, I as I've taught people. I've seen people come and go, the best, the best seers, whatever, come and go and go to the dark side. Because until you see the isness and, and recognize it, you got nothing. And so this is where I tell you it's 50 years. So, you know, whatever this experience is, I don't really care, but I'm looking at it too, and it's whatever. Again. You just got to kind of wait to see what happens from all this. Now, Rebazar and the guides, they know exactly what's going on. And whether I know it or not, the real me knows it. Okay. The personal me, I don't know everything here. I'm, I'm not interested. I just focus. And it's not important because everybody makes a choice. Each one of us make a choice every moment, just like Adolf Hitler decided to, you know, invade Poland, invade the world destroy whatever he was hired by the monarchy and the Vatican. Well, you know, again, choices. And so these are little things that we're going through here. They're little things. They're little personal things. And they cannot hurt you, okay? They can stab you and whatever. The stabbing is not really what you think it is. The stabbing is an idea. In other words, they want you to accept their idea that you can be destroyed. It's all illusion, just like we were talking about the debt. It's all illusion. It's made out of nothing. So you're okay now. Your other bodies are fine. It's just Wait, that. So I still have on five of my bodies? Please listen. That knife represents their idea to try to get you to agree to their deception. That's all. I didn't agree. Then that's fine. You don't have to agree. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's that simple, Eric. It's not, 
it's not all that mind stuff. You're you're very literal, and you have to practice letting go. Well, I'm the big brain. Well, you know, as long as you're that, you're stuck with yourself. Okay. Oh fuck. It too. Okay. Because look at the sun shining. It ain't the big brain. Okay. And you ever seen a brain? I'm the big brain. Have you ever seen a brain? Okay, you've seen pictures of a brain. It's a lot of gooey junk. That's all it is. Okay? So, yeah. You want to so, be the big brain? Go ahead. You can be whatever you want to be. That's what I told you before, etc. With it, you'll get nothing. Okay? So, life is about give me a new title? Like, I'm going to say this many times. Life is like being like the sun. You shine upon all. That's how you become more aware and free yourself. But if you would rather hot. brain than be free of all restriction, that's your choice. You see, you are the decider. You have grown up, you, Phil, and others, because you're younger, Dwayne here, etc. how you talk, how you act, you have grown up in the big gimmick world. And you think that gimmicks are really cool. Well, good luck, because with all of it, you will just create your own demise because it's all crap. 100%. It's not about that. Remember what I told you last week? All life is awareness. All right? Everything else, good luck, because you'll get all life is awareness. Yeah, all life is awareness. It's not thinking. All life is awareness. It's not cool stuff. It's not junk and gimmick. All life is awareness, bro. Yeah, yeah. it's very clean. It's very real. All life is awareness. The rest of your life to figure it out. So a step at a time. If you only could, if you only could see the lifetimes that you've already spent in creation, You'd be blown away. You can hear thousands of lifetimes going through so much crap and nonsense and being killed and killed others and all kinds of deception and just on and on relationships and whatever. Finally, to get to this point, to have this knowledge, to actually be able to pay attention. So I keep bringing this up, Eric. I mean, it's your choice if you want to do this. But, you know, again, uh, you have to really understand what you have, and that is is that you're very fortunate to have these experiences like you do, very, very fortunate, you and Phil, etc., because life is showing you something, and it's taken you a long time to get here, because you give it up. You got nothing but a junk world. Your gaming world and all this stuff, it's all crap. It's 100% crap, and it's helping to destroy the planet. It's helping to destroy creation. There's nothing positive about it. It's all negative and dark. 100%. Well, it looks good. It's got lights and the machine are going off and whatever. Pinball machine all looks good. You will have nothing. And as you get older, wait till you get older. Wait till you get 50, 60, 70. And that's coming if you make it that far. Because a lot's going to be happening on this world, and you're going to be screaming and wondering why. Because it's coming up. And the people that rule, the uh, the aliens that rule this planet, they're gradually and even more rapidly destroying this place. It's all under destruction. It's not getting better. It will never get better. It will be destroyed. That's real. Because of agreement, Eric. All I'm trying to do is reach a few people to try and wake up, but, you know, people don't want to wake up. You want to play with this nonsense? Keep playing with it. It's all death. You're lucky you're having these experiences. They're showing you something. Yeah, and what Fubi's showing you, too, you're stoned also. You know, you're with them. The thing is, is that you're a baby brain at this. You're just starting. You think you know something? You got nothing. You're before kindergarten, kid. You're not even in kindergarten yet. You got a long ways to go. You can think of yourself whatever you will. Why would you think I'm a little smarter than that? It's not about smarts. It's about awareness. 
It's not about smarts. The, see, you've grown up with that. You've grown up with the clicky generation. I grew up with it too in the 50s. The hey dad, what's cool, the beatniks, you know, the, the hippies, Woodstock, all that. Yeah, I didn't do all that stuff, but went through it. I was a surfer. But, you know, I went through it too. I went through all that stuff and I needed to see what doesn't work, what's not workable, what's not beneficial. I needed to go through that and see that this lifetime as I was with Paul and the other real guides since I came in here, okay, because I was to do this. So you have a privileged position and it has nothing to do with what you think. Not at all. Not at all. The sun's shining. That's what it is. And that's not you. That's why you're in the dinosaur body so much of the time. You are a dinosaur. Okay? Uh, it's a dragon, actually. doesn't Dolphins. matter. The dinosaur. It don't, it don't matter, Sonny. The thing is, is that, yeah. Well, what's the definition of a dinosaur, though? Kind of nebulous, you know? There's an old saying, okay, and it's before your time. When business, as an example, when one businessman would talk to another, he would say, oh, your business is a dinosaur. In other words, that could be like e Elon, e uh, Elon Monk, Musk talking to someone else, uh, some got business guy or, or, you know, maybe Chevy uh, GM and saying, you guys are dinosaurs. I'm the new thing. You see, it's an old saying. So again, yes, there's more to it than that. But Eric, you're just starting out here. And I'm just so trying you're a dinosaur to dinosaur here. Because you haven't been through things like I have. So you don't have a real relationship. Your relationship is with the gaming world, which is all I'm fake. pretty good at it. It don't matter. You the end result is you got nothing. It's all in your head. Everything that you think you have is in your head. That's as far as it goes. And you are your own effect. And all the technology is reptilian. You've sucked it in. And so that's all part of you. And until you get through it, that's part of you. And you're going to go through more lifetimes and just have to deal with it. All the tap lining that you don't see, just like Neo in the Matrix, you've got all those tap lines in you. Now, Rebazar and the guides are trying to give you a chance because you have connections. You can communicate with the younger generation, but you have to learn to focus to be able to do that, and it's going to take a lot. So you need to get out of yourself and Look at the world at what's really taking place. Look at all these kids. Look at all those gamers. They're all screwed. They're totally screwed into a demise that they don't see. But now you have the knowledge. You have experience. You can help them wake up. That's a all big All life is awareness. That's a big challenge. All life is awareness. That's the president idea. It's not that you run for the president of the United States. No, because you have to realize what's going on. And that is, is that, you know, All life's awareness. They're not going to pick anybody that's honest. Or All honest, life is awareness. Wants to do something good. They're going to pick people that are deceptors, liars, cheaters, thieves, killers, murderers. That's what all the presidents have been. That's why they get in there. And when people go to vote, that's all fake, too. It's all controlled. It don't matter who you vote for. It's all controlled. I know all this because I was in the Secret Service. I watched all of it. It's so simple. But see, Didn't you people, run for president? You know, and, and mind framed in a particular way, literalized, they don't see it. They just think that the system is, oh, this is how life is. We have governments. We have houses. We have freeways. We have jobs, whatever. They think this is how life is. This is not how life is. This is a junkyard. The whole world's been turned into a junkyard. Yeah. There's nothing here of value. Well, yeah, right. All life is awareness. That's your real value. But you need to learn to recognize that. And there's a lot to it. So little by little, with your real sight. All life is awareness. 
little by little with your real sighting. All Period. life is awareness. Yeah. I'm totally going to win that presidency, though. I think I really make a strong claim. No such thing. I'll show you, Dwayne. You'll no, be I so won't. proud of me. No, I won't. Because you won't do it. I have confidence. It's I'm not, not thinking. I'm just confident. You don't get it. You know, I'm trying to explain it to you. Maybe Phil understands, but you don't get it. It's not about what you think. Not even close. That's your own thinking again, Eric. See, you've been brought up and you you have mind framed yourself a particular way that it's all about your thinking. And look at the rest of the world. It's not considering anything you're doing. That's just you. Everybody else is doing their own thing. They're not paying attention to you. You're all by yourself. That's your own thinking. That's as far as it goes. I'm trying to show you how to do better than that. But you want to keep thinking about you and your own thinking. And just because you think that, you know, that this is this or this can be this or whatever, that don't make it so. Right now you're in your house. Why don't you think, oh, gee, I want the roof to fly off. Try that. See if the okay. roof flies. See if it flies off. Fly off. It won't. Because again, well, it hasn't happened yet, but it it's, might not, someday. it's not about your thinking. It's not about your thinking. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is where you start to meet your personal self, Eric. All Eric. life is awareness. And most people, they don't want to. Do All that life is awareness. Because they want to keep pretending in their own mind that everything's fine according to their thinking. That's a big hurdle. Yeah, because you've mind framed yourself into thinking that whatever you think, that's what it is. That's what it's got to be. And I'll just keep hoping and praying and believing or whatever you do, thinking it so. And possibly maybe something will come of it. But for the most part, it's just you thinking it. And that's as far as go. It has nothing to do with the whole of life. The whole of life is indifferent to all that. It's not concerned because you're on your own trip. You're creating your own journey. And it's going nowhere. You'll go nowhere just into future lifetimes. You'll start over again like you did this lifetime. And you're fortunate because you're young. You guys are young. You're still young. You know, I know a lot of people that are very old, 50, 60, 70, and, you know, looking at this, and it's very hard for them to grasp because they're so uh, mind-framed. They're so mind-grooved with their ideas and traditions and relationships and all these things, all this sticky stuff that keeps them in creation. Well, fine. If you want to stay in creation, it's fine. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying you have better choices now. You can make better choices. You're saying, I'm taking the time to tell you this. And look, I don't even get paid for it. He's got a big brain. Strategy. He 